we got a fish. All right, he took the zertle. I guess they are liking that zertle, huh? All right, ooh, no. Are you kidding me, dude? Hey guys, it's Hans here again. Welcome back to our Bug of the Month series. For November, our Bug of the Month is a crawfish. So I'm gonna take you through how I like to fish a crawfish. We've got a couple different ways we're gonna be fishing today. So I've got a Euro rig, kind of a beefed up Euro rig, if you will, to fish real heavy flies. And then we're also gonna rock a standard suspension nymph rig. So here I've got a 10 foot four weight Orvis Recon, a Reddington tilt reel, and I've got 200 yards of backing on there and right to the backing I've attached 20 pound amnesia. And I just loaded the entire spool of 20 pound amnesia to the backing. Off the end of the yellow amnesia, I got two feet of 15 pound red amnesia and then about a foot of 12 pound red amnesia. Right above the junction of the foot of the 12 pound and the 15 pound, I've got a little, I use some old fly line here to make a little what they call barrel cider. And that just helps me to keep track of how deep my cider material is if I do decide to dunk it, if I want to get real deep. And off of that, I've got a tippet ring. I'm running three X off the tippet ring, about five feet of it straight to my fly. And here we've got a real heavy, this is called a stanky leg pattern. Great little crawfish imitation. Super heavy, that's why I'm running three X on that guy today. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and fish this guy for a little bit, and I'm gonna run you through kind of my thought process while I'm fishing this. Like I said, I'm running kind of a beefed up Euro rig here. So only 3X. Usually you would never come across a Euro rig fish at just 3X, but I have an extremely, extremely heavy fly. It's got a six and a half millimeter tungsten bead on it and 15 wraps of 030 lead wire. So I'm, I'm getting down. The 3X isn't preventing me from getting down. And that's typically why we're just running 6X. And then uh, if you think about a crawfish, how they move in the water, they're typically, they've got real fast darting motion. Um, and then, you know, they aren't constant swimmers. So it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me to just give constant quick strips. So I'm typically bouncing this thing running that fly over there and then popping my rod tip two or three inches keeping that fly basically touching the bottom and then right off the bottom so cast this baby upstream giving it a jig just letting it touch bottom and then lifting it off bottom again and again now your eats when you're fishing this you're not typically going to get those real subtle eats you get when you're nymphing these eats you're going to be able to feel them um, before you can see them lots of the times just because of the fact that I am always, always in constant contact with that fly. And that's one of the keys about doing this on a Euro rig is you must be in constant contact. So when that fly is dropping, I don't have all, a lot of slack in the system. I am maintaining contact as that fly is coming up and going down through the water column. So if a fish eats, I'm gonna feel it. Ooh, felt a little something there. Could have been bottom. So we've taken a couple drifts upstream here we're going to move i'm going to give some drifts directly across stream and kind of jig this across current downstream of myself here tiny little movements with the rod tip just popping it swimming that little crayfish just 
try to envision what a crayfish looks like. That's what we want to do with our fly when they're swimming. Now, when it comes to the fly selection, there are tons and tons of different crayfish patterns. And if you tie, you can, if you have a crayfish pattern you like, you can make it into a fly that would work great on a Euro rig. You just have to add lots of weight. Key is having a lot of weight to make this work. Color-wise, crayfish for the most part, at least the crayfish around here, um, are fairly drab and dull in color. So like olives are a great color, browns, rust. Usually having a lighter belly is a good plan too. So like tan, a tan body fly with a darker back to it is a great, great option. Here we're fishing a fly called a stanky leg and this fly is an olive, but you can tie it in a whole bunch of different colors. Just seems like olive has kind of been the uh, winner for us today. So most commonly, if you, if you look up pictures of crayfish, ooh, we got a little bump there, uh, online, most commonly you're gonna see them brown or kind of a rust, rust meaning like a, a dark orange. Um, so that's a great color to fish crayfish patterns in. They do get, a little lighter when they're gonna molt, which is just something that occurs naturally with them. The younger, more juvenile crayfish, they molt every seven to 10 days. But once you become, once they become adults, that really only happens every 30 to 40 days or so. And it is, uh, from what I've researched, the molting process is something they go through as they're growing. But once they're fully grown, it's really just to regenerate lost limbs which is kind of cool okay all right so we're just fishing this from a little bit of a downstream angle we're going to give it a different approach we've worked upstream a little bit i'm going to cast straight into it so i can instead of drift that fly down through it i'm going to pull it across current and see if that changes anything here just a little different look I'm just maintaining caught there he is nope that's a rock <laughs> well here we go again Big fish, got off, shoot. LDR, long distance release, baby. Oh, there it is. That was, woo! That's a better fish. That was sick. <laughs> All right, guys, let's get you a good view of this fish. This fly is right in the corner of the mouth. Sweet fish. Okay, buddy, let's get you going here. All right, let's get you guys a little good view of this guy and then let him on his way here. Beautiful rainbow. Gorgeous. Made my day, buddy. This morning, oh, that was awesome. And see the sun high. There he is. All right, he was right behind that rock. I shut the door and walk into the light. Oh, yeah. And suddenly, my phone is ringing. I can hear my boss a right shout. Right. He wants me to hurry, but I will not control my feet. Oh no, it is so sweet under the sun. And awesome. even if my pocket's empty, I don't What a good day, man. <laughs> I'm having fun. All right, guys, I want to touch base a little bit on that last fish. So. We've spent a little time fishing below this little rock weir. We didn't pull any fish there. We made a couple casts up above it, up here. And even on the near side, if you can see the submerged boulder here, I pulled the fish right on the far side of that boulder. 
So I ran my fly straight down, kind of in your typical straight downstream kind of drift, and I didn't pick up any fish. I, that last cast where I caught that fish, I casted way up in the shallows over there, and I dragged that little fly right cross current directly towards this rock. And if I didn't hook the fish, I probably would have hooked the rock, but that just goes to show you, sometimes you have to be willing to risk your fly to catch some of the fish that are holding in those tight cover kind of areas. We're gonna go ahead and see if he might have a friend hanging out there. Alright guys, so I'm gonna go a little over the cast here with this Euro streamer rig I'm running here. Typically when I'm casting, I don't have much more than a rod length of line from the tip of the rod to the fly. And that's just because the fly's so heavy, it's gonna pull all of this monofilament out when I make a cast. It's really hard to cast with a lot of line out. And then after you make your cast with your left hand, it's fairly important to, I like to just draw a circle and make sure my line stays through there. That gives me the ability to grab that line immediately and start managing it as the fly is drifting back towards myself. If you don't do that, this line is going to have a tendency to come and wrap around the butt section of your rod and it just becomes harder to manage the drift immediately. So make your cast with about a rod length of line. Keep that line through your little thumb and index opening here so that you can immediately after the cast grab that and manage your, manage your slack. Something like this. And then I'm in immediate contact, fishing right away. I don't have to worry about trying to find that line so I can manage it. Okay, so again, got about a length of line out here, a rod length. And I'm just letting that thing hit bottom and lifting it off bottom. I'm letting the current take it until it slaps bottom again. Okay, I was fishing pretty far upstream on that one. Let's try a little more cross current here. And um, the cool thing about this is you're just trying to make this thing swim, right? So if you're pulling it across current, that's fine. That crawfish moved that man in that manner, you know? Let's get this going again here. It, oh, I just got a bump. I'm gonna cast straight across, give it a little strip towards us, and then start hopping. Fish on. Oh, he spit it. Well, I'm pretty sure that's the guy that bumped me. I don't think he's gonna come back again because we stuck him that time. <laughs> but he spit the hook. We'll try one more over here for him. See, so casting straight across current. Come until I get contact and then jigging. Completely across current, downstream of myself now. That's where that fish just took. There he is, oh my God. Do you see that? Well, it's coming right back there if he does it again. There he is. He chased it all the way in. That was awesome. Here with the net. All right. Flies out. Yes. That fish was aggressive. We saw this fish 
a couple times while I was fishing my indicator rig and I was going to recast and the fish was chasing down my flies as I was going to recast. And then again, I cast up and I was going to recast and he came up to the top and hit something or came right after my flies. So I went over, I grabbed the Euro rod and I was jigging this stanky leg pattern. And uh, basically what happened is because I saw that fish swimming fast, I started just kind of stripping it like a streamer, giving it little tiny twitches. And he ate right at my feet here. It was awesome. Let's give you guys a look at this guy. Pretty little rainbow. Hmm, we got this beauty little fish. And as you can see, it doesn't take a big fish to eat a big meal. All right, so we just caught a little fish out of here. We're gonna see if we can pick up another one. Maybe his big brother's hanging out. <clears throat> so we were just literally <laughs> casting this little crawfish pattern up in the top of this slack water and stripping it back. So I'm gonna continue trying to do that same thing. Now, if you're ever out trying this streamer on a Euro rig, or right now I'm just running straight mono, you get all these coilies in here, it makes things a bit difficult. So I just pull it out, put it over my knee and give it a stretch takes all those coils out of that line and makes it a whole lot easier to manage. I put it out in the main current, just stripped it across. All right, we got another. Well, sorry about that, guys. I was breaking the rule on fishing when the camera wasn't going, but we got another here, another rainbow on that stanky leg again. Look at that guy. Took it right in the side of the mouth there. You can talk to your father, talk to your mother, eyes on you. Awesome. That time I was just, I threw it out in the main current and I was slowly jigging it through that main current back to myself in this slack water. And right kind of when the fly hit that soft moving water, or soft water that's not moving, that fish railed it. Awesome. So when I'm fishing this mono rig, the streamer on a mono rig here, kind of what I'm gonna do is cast as much of this mono as I can out there. I'm gonna be stripping the line with my line managing hand, so my non-dominant hand, which is my left hand. And then once I get to the red section on my line up there, I kind of animate the fly more so with the tip uh, until it gets right close to me. So I can fish it right to my feet, basically. And I'll, I'll show you what I mean by that. So we come out here, launch out all that mono. I'm gonna strip. Oh, got a little bump there. Once you get to this red section here of the amnesia, I'm just gonna pop, jig this thing right in front of myself. And that's how I picked up the first fish. It was right at my feet here. And then once I'm here, we're good to go. Shoot out all that mono, strip it in. And then I get to that red section of amnesia, and I just pop that thing. There he is. Be yourself no matter what to keep what is yours. Don't you ever be blinded with illusion. All right, so we got uh we got another here. He was hanging out right in this right behind these rocks upstream. Again on that stanky leg pattern. And again, not a very big fish. So, you know, a lot of people think you have to fish tiny tiny flies to be able to catch these fish. Even small fish are gonna eat decently sized offerings every now and then. All right, let's let this fella go. Thanks, buddy. Awesome, I, 
I saw him previously swirling up here and I think he chased my fly then I threw it back two more drifts and he came and hammered that. Awesome. If you rise, if you rise, if you rise, don't forget your past situation. All right, guys, so we have changed locations. I've got an indicator rig now on, so I'm just running a Oros indicator in the medium size up here. We've got about five feet to my first fly, which I'm running a Zertle bug, and then after that, I am running a little crawfish woolly bugger variation. I'm gonna fish this just like I would a dead drift nymph rig, except I'm going to give it more aggressive twitches when I'm doing, or more aggressive mins, I guess I should say, because if you move the indicator on the mend, it's gonna end up popping that fly around and making it move just like a crawfish does. So we're gonna give that a go and see if we can pull a fish out of here. All right. We got some funky currents going on here. There we go. I'm gonna cast up in the slow water real quick here and just kind of strip my indicator back. See if I can get any love on stripping. Now, I think that stripping a crawfish with an indicator um, is advantageous for the fact that that indicator is keeping, <clears throat> every time I pull it, it's pulling those craws up a little bit. So I'm going to almost fish this just like you would a streamer. I'm going to roll cast up in the soft pool here. My indicator's up in the pool, and I'm going to strip my indicator back to me slowly. And that'll tell me if a fish eats my flies. If you stumble, if you stumble, if you stumble, try to lift your mind through meditation. If you rise, if you rise, if you rise, try to keep... All right, guys, so we're here dredging a new little rock weir we have, trying to see if there are any fish under there that are looking for a bigger meal. Now, we've talked a little bit today about doing this with a Euro rig and under a suspension system, what I'm doing now. Um, but you can absolutely fish crawfish uh, on a streamer rod as well. Floating line, again, would be just fine as long as it's a fairly aggressive line, something like a Titan Taper from SA or an Outbound Short from Rio. Um, or what I'm fishing right now is a Scientific Anglers and Nodro line. It's just, it's one and a half line weights heavy. It's got the ability to cast these real heavy flies because I want to be dredging the bottom. Uh, but what I was saying here is you can absolutely do this on a streamer rig as well. If you wanted to be fishing like a, a sink tip line or even a floating line like this in Nodro uh, and imparting action to the fly via strips rather than mins. Um, I just personally find it a little more effective to fish these guys under an indicator because I can really kind of give it those pops like a natural crayfish does. Just because typically if you if you watch a crayfish when it swims, the thing doesn't swim just neatly underwater, right? The thing is pops up, darts from spot to spot and then goes back down. And that's kind of what I'm trying to accomplish fishing this with that indicator rig. The indicator is giving me a point of reference on the surface that I can pop those flies a couple times and then let them continue to drift. Let's see if we can get right up in these rocks here, make it come right off the drop off. get down a tad and I'm gonna try to hit this slack water behind these boulders here and I'm gonna attempt to use the current to pull the fly downstream because I know if it lands in that slack water it's not gonna move so I'm actually gonna let the current kind of drag my line a little bit where you would typically throw a mend in just to make sure it's pulling the flies out of that slack water so I don't mend completely to the indicator and it'll pull that indicator keeping those flies moving. Which again, is fine when you're fishing a pattern like this that is meant to move. If you're fishing nymphs under an indicator, of course you would not want to be imparting unnatural movements to those things. Like a treasure from 
from the tree Right from the tree My body ain't confused no more Who you hear down I'm looking at the sky See the spark and singing I Wait I've been All right guys, well we're wrapping up the day here. We had an absolute blast. Uh, I hope you gained some valuable information from what we did today. And if, you, as always, if you have any questions on anything I talked about, come in the shop and ask me. I'm always more than willing to share. We'll catch you on the next one. Ready for the pro move here? Are you guys watching? This is what not to do. Sometimes you have to learn by someone telling you what not to do. Okay? So let's go ahead and get this free. Say bye bye. There's two more flies. That'll be count up to nine. No, the bobber's staying. Oh, it's super easy to cast now. It's like casting a dry fly. <laughs> Gotta risk it to get the biscuit, baby. Those flies didn't want to be in fish smells anyway. Crayfish look like lobsters, but they're mini. <laughs> Little micro lobsters.